In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add texture and visual interest to your animated type. Hey there, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take animated type and make it more cinematic by adding After Effects effects to create texture. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects, and I have created a new composition, retro type, 1080 by 1080. I want to make this an Instagram social media post. So I'm doing a square 1080 by 1080, 24 frames per second and duration of three seconds. Click OK. And I'm actually going to go ahead and start with a new solid background layer. And because we're going to do this more in a retro style, I don't want like a solid deep black. I want to have more of a bluish black, which I have here. So I found that this is a nice color I like. Click OK and we'll call this background. And next thing we need was we needed some types. So we'll take our type tool and we're gonna click here and just type in R-E-T-R-O. And this is not the typeface I want, but I found that I liked one for Den. This is a, a favorite typeface of mine that I like to use a lot of times. I'm also going to go ahead and click this faux bold to make the type just a little bit more bold. And let's make it a lot bigger. Let's go up to like maybe 300. And we're going to align it center and vertically as well. Let's actually go ahead and increase the size of this to 350. And let's make the color more in that white range, something like this. And hit R for rotation, set a keyframe, and we're gonna go two seconds down and set a revolution of one. So we have this, and it looks terrible because we need to get that anchor point in the middle. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I personally like to use Anchor Point Mover from AE Juice, but there's a lot of these. You just want to center that anchor point up in the middle there. And now if I preview it, we've got a nice rotation. So I'm going to take both these keyframes now, and I'm going to right click and say Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. It'll ease into that rotation and then ease out of the rotation as well. And with those two keyframes selected, I'm going to go into my graph editor here, and I'm just going to Bring these in just a little bit. So it looks pretty good. And we're gonna go ahead and make this end right here. And the next thing we're gonna do is just shift and hit T for opacity. And we're gonna set keyframes here so that uh, we can have a fade in and out to create a loop. So. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. And we'll set keyframes at the beginning. We want it to be zero, and we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And I'm just hitting page up and down to create, uh, to move forward and backward frame by frame. Uh, so our animation's almost complete. Last thing we need to do here is select our type and go up to effect, time, and we're gonna use echo. And Echo creates, just like we see here, these echoes. So what we're gonna do is change the number of echoes to 18, and we're going to add a decay of 0.8, and let's set this to screen as well. And now if you watch this, we've got this really cool echo effect happening. So one more step here to, to complete the animation is let's go ahead and duplicate retro and we're going to take the, the, co the color from the solid, which was right here. So we'll double click, Command C to copy, and go up to this top layer here, select all, and change the color to the same color as the background. And we're gonna turn off echoes, and we're also gonna turn off any keyframes. And we'll preview this now, and we've got some interesting looking animation uh, that could be on social media. You see this kind of stuff all the time and uh, looks really cool, right? So how can we take this a step further? We're gonna add texture to this to really make this a lot more cinematic uh, and visually uh, interesting to look at. So I'm gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer and this layer we're gonna call effects. And we're gonna start with an effect I always love to use, which is under blur and sharpen fast box blur and what this is doing is just giving us a little bit softer edge so 
we typically want a value between one and three. So two feels like too much. 1.5 is not bad. One, let's go to 1.5. And we'll call it good for that. Next thing we're gonna do is go into effect, noise and grain, noise. This is always a great effect to use to really blend things together. 10% is gonna work just fine. Then we're gonna go into effect, stylize, glow. And to this, we're gonna turn up the radius to 100, so it's wider, and we're gonna crank up the amount to about 1.5. Just like that, it looks nice. And the next effect we're gonna add here for some more texture is under simulation, CC ball action, right here. And you know, off the top, this looks like, why would you add this? Like adding all these crazy little balls here. What we're gonna do is just turn down the grid spacing to one, so it's very small. And we're gonna take the ball size down to 50. And it creates this almost half tone effect like we see here. And for our final effect, we're gonna go up to effect and we're gonna go down here to noise and grain, fractal noise, and we're just gonna create some interesting specs that happen on screen here. So we'll keep this contrast, we'll take up to 400, brightness negative 200, and let's take the size down to 75. And it's very, very subtle here, right? Just some little tiny specs, but if we go in to our evolution, if we alter option click on random seed and then type in random 10,000, now we're gonna have something that looks like film dust happening on screen. And we can see there, it's looking really cool, right? So we had that really basic text animation that now looks super retro. So the final thing I wanna do here is when we added that ball action, it really darkened up this piece. So let's go into effect, color correction, and let's go into our exposure. And let's go ahead and bring exposure up. Maybe a five. I come in here and I turn exposure off and I turn ball action off and fractal noise. One thing I wanna look at here with fractal noise is blending mode. If I set this to screen, now I think if I turn exposure off or turn exposure on, but let's crank the value down, maybe something like one, maybe two. I really dig the, the vibe here. Maybe turn the exposure back down to one. Yeah, that two was just a little bit too much, but I really like how it kind of blows out these highlights here, uh, kind of, creates even more of a retro vibe uh, with those highlights, with that glow happening. So that my friends is how you create more interesting animation by just adding simple things that create texture on the piece, right? So we went from what we see here, cool animation, but uh, you know, limited in, in, in terms of cinematic feel and adding that texture right over the top gives us a whole different vibe. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron and this is Motion Science.